Microsoft have added the ability to create PDFs inside of Power Apps. Well, they kind of have, not really, but they've made it a little bit easier than previous methods to create PDFs. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to do that. As you can see on the screen here, I've got the official Microsoft documentation up for the PDF function in Power Apps or the PowerFX function. And you can see it is still in experimental, so it hasn't been fully released yet, but you can enable it in your Power App today. So if you want to use it, you can use it right now and it does work. There's just some caveats to that, but definitely if you need to do PDFing in your Power App, it's worth watching this video to the end. So stick with me, don't leave, stick with me. So this page here, this Power Apps documentation from Microsoft is pretty light on. You can see it's like one page and there's really not that much here to go on. I guess it's still an experimental, so they're not really showing you that much about it. Uh, but there could be more documentation now at the time of you watching this video. Um, but right now, I believe this is the only official documentation for this PDF function. We've got the description here on how to use the function and some parameters we can pass to it. And of course, we've got our little table here showing us some examples. Now, one of the things you can see here, we can just run our function and we can pass a screen to it, which is, this is really useful. Or we can pass a container, so we can create a container on our screen and then pass whatever contents in that container to our PDF function, which will then create the PDF blob for us. Now, um, here's another example here of setting sort of the DPI and the margins and that stuff. So hopefully with this function, we'll be able to, we'll get a bit more sort of granular, um, we'll get a bit more of the ability to be able to modify what our PDF looks like. Um, in particular, sort of setting up our page sizes, which seems to be a real problem with uh, creating and exporting to any sort of format from Power Apps, getting those sort of page sizes right. First off, we need to do, we have our existing Power App, to go into the cog here on the top left, uh, bottom left hand corner and click on Upcoming Features. Now, over here, we've got some tabs and we go, need to go to experimental, scroll all the way to the bottom and enable the PDF function. So now we'll be able to use that PDF function inside of our Power App. So first thing I would like to do, let's just say I want to PDF the, the actual Power Apps demo view. Now, this is going to be super uninteresting PDF, but it'll be a good example for you to show you how to do this. So let's insert a button and we'll insert, we get a nice PDF icon. So let's click on that. So this is a bit we now have to set up our PDF function to create our PDF. So let's do that. Now, the PDF function returns back a blob of data, which is just basically it creates the PDF in memory and that's all it does. So we have to capture that somehow because that PDF returns back that PDF in memory. We have to set a variable to be that PDF. So let's do that. So let's just call this var PDF blob. And that's the variable that's going to receive the PDF data into memory. So we have to set that to our PDF function, our newly created or newly experimental PDF function that we've just enabled in our app. And uh, we're just going to pass it this screen. So the screen we're currently on. So our, my idea is that the user is going to come to the screen and go, yep, I like this. I need a PDF of this because I want to email it to someone or I want to save it and put it into uh, like, um, you know, file it on my PC, which is probably most likely what a lot of people are going to be doing with this. 
I think the other use, uh, good use case is sending it directly to email, which you can also do as an attachment. And I believe there's videos already out there that show you how to do that. So I won't go into this today, but certainly by this method, I think this method I'm about to show you is sort of the, is, is the expected behavior of what you would think this PDF function would do, where you would click on the button, button it would create that pdf or would pdf that screen and then it would open that in another tab allowing you to review what you've done and or save that somewhere to use at a later date so this is what this is going to do so inside the pdf function we all we need to give this is the screen that we're pdfing so this will be the view issue so view issue is the current screen that i'm looking at and that's it so what that will do is it will create that blob based on that uh pdf screen sorry that based on that power app screen so what i'm going to do next is i'm going to take that that pdf blob that's in memory and i'm going to use my same workflow that i created for my file attachments to save that file to sharepoint which will then allow us just to open that in a new tab now if you haven't seen my file attachments video um i'm going to link to it on the screen now it is in my opinion the best and easiest way to do file attachments in power apps if you're interested, well, to follow the rest of this video, you're really gonna need that file attachments workflow in place. So what I suggest, pause this video, open up that one in another browser window, watch it, get that workflow. It's a pretty simple workflow. Find out how to do that, then come back here and, and finish this video. So you'll need that file attachments um, workflow in place to complete this. I've already got that file attachments flow connected to this power app. It's just my save file to SharePoint. So I just put a semicolon after the, the, the set function, and then I'm going to run my file. Sorry, save file to SharePoint run. And this function requires a an ID of the record. So I'll do that just so we've um, we've got that identifier in that library. And then the next thing that I am doing is next function I need to pass to it. And this is where I actually pass the blob of the PDF to the save to file to SharePoint. So this is a record that contains a record and it, the property name inside of that record is file. And inside of file, we need another record. And the first property that it's expecting is content bytes. And guess what? Content bytes is our PDF blob. The next property it's expecting is name. And let's give that, let's give that the gal ID and we'll concatenate to that. Oh. Um, export PDF, PDF dot PDF. I'll just format that text. And that's what it looks like, our function. So that will pass that particular blob and that will create our PDF in SharePoint. Now, the last thing to finish off this user experience and get this working exactly how we want it to work, we just want to run this launch function so launch will open that PDF in a new tab. And this is my URL to that PDF. Now I know this has to be in here. We want So 
just put an underscore at the front here as well. Just tidies that up because I know the file name is going to be the record ID underscore and then I'm just going to call it PDF export. So this is what I'm saving the file name as and this is what it'll launch as in in Power Apps or in a new tab in your browser. So let's give that a test. Oh, sharp eyes out there would have noticed I had this file name wrong. So let me just go back and fix this. So our file name was actually our ID underscore export PDF. So let me fix that. Now let's try it. Click PDF. Again, probably nice to have a little progress bar here to, to show you that it's exporting. You can see our PDF, our export is waiting for our PDF to be created. And our export has automatically opened in a new tab. And here's our export. Now, the great thing about this is from a user's point of view, this is a really good um, user experience because now from here I can choose to, I can choose to download the PDF um and save that wherever i wherever i want to i can then copy the link i can um, work with it inside adobe acrobat now the other thing that we can do with this is we can create like a um like a pdf viewer now i'll show you quickly how this works it's it like i said it's not the best experience but um, we have this thing called PDF Viewer and highlighted there as experimental. Now, if we just open that, I'll just leave that on the same screen and you can see it accepts a document. Now, all we have to do here is give this the actual variable that we created from our, from our PDF. And if we give it that, we can see that it displays our PDF in the PDF Viewer. The only, like I was saying, the problem with this is we don't get any additional controls here at the time of creating this video. So for me, the, in my opinion, this is pretty useless. Uh, you, I mean, what's the point of actually viewing the PDF without being able to do actually anything with it? I guess if you wanted to show this to the user as a preview of what the PDF looked like and then go and do something with it, like email it or something like that, then this would probably be okay. So that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you liked it. If you did, click the like button, hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with all the latest content and comment something in the comment section below. I thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.